Now, I want you to do something a bit weird on Desmos. Okay, here we are. And I'm going to leave this here because I don't want those markings we had before. You know how we put some effort into turning this into like pies and pie on twos and all that, right? And this is going to sound weird, but I want us to undo that. You might be like, why? We just put effort into doing it. I want to show you why by doing a bit of an adjustment here. Go to where that step was. Uh, there it is, right there. Okay, we made a part two. Just delete it, and it will default back to just like numbers. Okay, like so. This is what we have got. Here's what I want you to do. I want us to say, okay, I know. Let's just. Go back here. I know the gradient's positive here, right? It's going up. But I don't know how much it's going up. But I don't want just know the sign. I want to know its magnitude. Okay. Here's the way we're going to do it, and I'm going to ruin. On the origin. We know the gradient is some positive number here. I want to know what positive number it is. So go ahead and start to zoom. Don't go too fast, but start to, oh, that's not what I wanted to do, sorry. Start to go toward the origin, like that. See what we're doing here? I'm getting closer and closer. I'm just interested in this spot here. Now, what I want you to notice is, in fact, I've got the ruler here. What I want you to notice is that sort of close in to the origin, it kind of looks pretty straight, right? Do you see that? In fact, it's one of the things, as I looked around, I said to some of you guys, your graphs look good, goes through the right spots, intercepts are correct, but the shape's a little bit off. This is one of the things I was talking about. It's weird because it's curvy mostly, but then in particular spots, it's very straight. Okay? Now, I want you to look particularly at this little corner here from 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 up there. Okay, zoom into it a little bit so with me if you will. Okay. So I want you to think about the gradient of this line. In fact, the section I'm showing you is almost entirely straight, isn't it? Like there's a little curve, but not much. Okay. What's the gradient here? One. It's it's pretty bang on to one, right? Like look here, you go uh, run is 0 0.2, and then rise also 0 0.2. In fact, the closer you go, go ahead, just go bananas and zoom in and zoom in and zoom in, right? And you can prove to yourself that this is really close to one by does have a gradient that passes through this line and sort of comparing them. What is the equation of the line that's straight, goes to the origin, and has a gradient of 1? Y, y equals x, right? Okay, then you've got this um, other spot here we can put new equations on. Go ahead and put in y equals x. And in fact, if you've zoomed in as far as I have, you cannot distinguish the two graphs, right? They are bang on. Okay? So what can we determine here? Let's just come back out. What have we got on our little sort of list here? Okay, we've determined. Yeah, it's interesting, right? We've determined that the derivative should be periodic. We know these particular spots when the derivative should be zero. We also know these particular spots when the derivative should be positive or negative. And lastly, at a spot like x equals zero, this is not the only one, by the way. I want you to tell me another one in a second. At a spot like that, the derivative, in fact, is equal to what did we just work out? What number? It was one. Right? I'm just going to zoom out now again. Tell me another spot where the derivative will be 1. Let me just put this back in. Yeah. Tell me another spot. 2 pi. 2 pi should be exactly the spot we should expect. Why? Have a look at our list of clues. It's periodic, it's periodic right? So if it, was, if it was a gradient of 1 here, it should be a gradient of 1, 2 pi radians later, and another 2 pi, and so on. Okay. Draw for me, please, a new set of axes in your book. It's going to go from 0 to 2 pi. And we're going to fit all of these clues together. And we'll see if we can do this. <laughs> see what we can do there. Do you have a green marker on you by any chance? Thank you.
Now, as you're putting together that set of axes, this is what I'd like you to make it look like. And I'm going to explain to you why it looks like that. Um, I am trying to capture all the clues we worked out together in this set of axes. Okay, this is what I'm going to capture. So, firstly, we know this is a graph that's periodic. So, whatever I'm going to get, I want to repeat over and over again. Okay. I also know there are some crucial spots that I worked out. There are stationary points on y equals sine x. So this, which is going to be my derivative of sine x, it's going to be 0 at these particular spots that you helped me identify. So I'm going to uh, mark them in a little more heavily. There's pi on 2 right there, and there's 3 pi on 2. So far, so good. What's this green shading about? This is, it goes up and down. What's this reflect? How do we get this information? You've, you've drawn it on your page. It's the, yeah, it's the pluses and the minuses, right? It's like, oh, for this whole section of graph, the sine x graph was going down. It was dropping. So we knew it was a decreasing function. That means the gradient will be negative and positive in these axes. And then lastly, the last piece of information is at x equals 0, that's here. At x equals 0, we actually went and investigated what the gradient became. It was exactly 1. So therefore, I've got this spot up here. We also notice that all the way over at y, we observe the same gradient, which didn't surprise us. It's periodic. Uh, one more spot, and you can see it on your graph. When you're at x equals pi on the sine graph, the gradient is not 1, it's not 0. What is it? It'll be negative. It's the opposite, isn't it? Because all of the trigonometric graphs have this wonderful symmetry. So there it is down there. Now, by now, hopefully, you are not just suspicious. You're like, I only know a single function that does this, that goes through those spots. It's periodic, like you described. Let's do <laughs> what a joke. Okay, let's go ahead. Can we draw it in, please? Okay, we're going to get this shape here. It's called. That's cosine. Right? So what I've just shown you, I want to emphasize, this is not proof. Okay, if we were to do like a proper rigorous proof, we need to go back to first principles. Do you remember doing that? This stuff, right? Uh, the derivative is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of yeah, and then this weird function notation here, yeah, f of x plus h minus f of x on h. You have to do this with sine x, which is doable, but number one, kind of requires a bit of the stuff from the extension course, and number two, roughly takes about three times longer than this. That's part of why we're not doing this. This is not a proof, but it is still a visual intuition, which we backed up with some data, that the derivative of sine x equals what? It's, it's cos. That's the function that we came up with. Okay? It ticks all the boxes. It does exactly what we need it to do. And like I said, if you want, I'm very happy to show you the formal rigorous proof for this, but it's a bit longer than the two. 